Thunderbolt Pixel. Very rarely do fighting games venture off from their normal standards. Now there are a few times that developers tampered with the norm and reared off to try new things with fighting game characters or franchises. The main one that comes to mind is Tabo No. 1 for the PlayStation 1 by Squaresoft, which experimented with a small endurance adventure mode back in the 90s. Tekken has also done the same thing, experimenting with a type of adventure mode in their game. But what many people don't know is that Dead or Alive was attempting to take their series in this direction. And so in today's video, we'll be discussing the unreleased Dead or Alive Code Cronus and Project Progressive. Now before I begin, I would like to thank one of our viewers, Guernica Man, for the suggestion to do this game for one of our videos. As honestly, I had no idea that this even existed. So let's move on to the topic. In 2002, an idea came to mind to create a type of game from the Dead or Alive franchise. Everyone agreed and this game came to be known as Dead or Alive Code Cronus. Team Ninja wanted to make this game a prequel to the main series. The game told the story of Ayane and Katsumi before the very first Dead or Alive game. Now Code Cronus was to take the fighting game series in a totally new direction, the likes of a full-on action-adventure game, similar to the other Team Ninja game, Ninja Gaiden. This was confirmed by Team Ninja's Tomonobu Itagaki. The game was also to be an Xbox exclusive. Interestingly enough, in Itagaki's Facebook page, he replied to a fan's comment on March 2014 stating, I miss games made by you. I still wish that Dead or Alive Code Cronus got made. Is it true that the game would have been more of a Double Dragon type game than a regular Dead or Alive game, but with Ayane and Kasumi? To where Itagaki replied, Me too, I love Dead or Alive Code Cronus, as it is the father of the Dead or Alive universe. So I find it strange that some people said Dead or Alive Code Cronus was never in production. If that's true, I guess that means I'm free to say whatever I want about it. Let me fill you in on the quote unquote truth. Dead or Alive Code Cronus was a roguelike in production. If someone wants to try to reverse that reality, they'll first have to own up to their lies. But it's not something you should worry about too much. Cause creating a game isn't easy, you know? Only people with the ability to play inside their head, even before sitting down to write code, are able to be a game designer. Whoever thinks that the development is only concerned about things visible and playable should pack up their bags and go back to the countryside. This is also an important truth. I'll put that down here as a tip for anyone interested in developing brand new original games. Now the rumor has it that Code Cronus was supposed to be similar to the opening cinematic of Dead or Alive Ultimate that showed the child version of Kasumi and the Yane. In a separate rumor, it is said that the intro of Dead or Alive Ultimate was originally made for a Dead or Alive Code Cronus, and it was used for Dead or Alive Ultimate. Due to the fact that the Xbox 360 was on the verge of being released and Code Cronus was being moved to the next gen console. The fact that a placeholder box for Code Cronus can be seen in a Dead or Alive 4 promo ad published in various Japanese magazines gives further relevance to this rumor. In 2008, Itagaki left Team Ninja and this project Code Cronus went along with him. In 2010, the new CEO of Team Ninja told Famitsu Magazine that Dead or Alive Code Cronus was officially cancelled. Now the awkward thing about it is the fact that Team Ninja never released any videos or screenshot of this project at all. In fact, the only thing the public has that proves this game's existence is the logo which was once in their website. Now I really want to apologize for the lack of material for this game, but it just seemed like Team Ninja kept this game very tight-lipped. Which leads us to the next unreleased game by Team Ninja called Project Progressive. The hearsay was that Project Progressive was to be a Dead or Alive game, since it was advertised with other Dead or Alive titles. It's actually in the same ad displaying the Code Cronus game, Project Progressive can be seen on the far right corner. Now this promo made it seem possible that it might have something to do with Kasumi, Kasumi Alpha or Alpha 152, even though this game was to be a very different game from that of Code Cronus. Now unlike Code Cronus, this game actually had a few concept art images that were released for the 10th anniversary of Dead or Alive series in 2006. 
The concept art consists of young Asian women wearing ancient garbs and holding various weapons. And one of an actual location shows the four women plus a horse in an ancient style setting. Now even though these pictures are good to have, it just makes you even further wonder what exactly this game was, or better yet, what the plot was supposed to be. And on November 5th, 2010, in an interview with Famitsu, the head of Team Ninja, Yosuke Hayashi, stated that Project Progressive had made it to a plot version, but the game had actually been dropped sometime after the 10th anniversary. And there is no plan to continue its development, unfortunately. But honestly, that's pretty much it. Nothing else is known of Project Progressive, and it kinda sucks that we never got anything. Because Team Ninja did a great job reviving the Ninja Gaiden games, so who knows what they could have accomplished with these projects. But unfortunately, that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. Check out some of our other videos if you'd like. And don't forget to like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, and also check out our Patreon page if you like. And give us any other suggestions for any future videos. And I will catch you all next time.